Hi. Um, this slide addresses a very emotional issue. Whenever we talk about changing the way we do things, uh, I often will hear, oh, the sales force won't like that. They'll resist it. They'll, the hottest word I can think of is retaliate. They'll, some of them may leave and take their business elsewhere. I don't want to risk that. Um, and when I hear these statements, they're very general and they tend to be sort of uh, awfulizing also. So um, let's see if we can break this sort of general problem into specific little pieces and deal with the pieces. Um, when it comes to uh, h hiving off small accounts from outside salespeople, I've even had salespeople admit to me, so you know, I don't, I don't call them about 50% of my customers, but as long as my number's on there and they buy anything, I get some credit, so I might as well leave my number on there. No one's saying I shouldn't. Um, and then I point out, yeah, but, but these are lonely little customers, and if they might not bug you, but then they'll go bug your horse. In other words, they're constantly bogging down inside sales and other people with all their issues and problems, and that keeps these people from taking care of the customers that really matter to you the most. You know, they sort of look at me like, oh, I, I haven't really looked at it from that angle. But let's just assume that right now we're thinking that, that the commissions that the salespeople get on minnows is an entitlement. I think the first thing to do is quantify that and look at how, how much we're really talking about from an income viewpoint for salespeople. In some cases, a simple answer might be to say to a sales rep, you know, I want to take away these 30, 40, you know, customers, and this is what you would have made in the next year on these guys, and I'll just give you a check, a year's worth of commissions up front, so it's not that much, and it says buy them from you. And then you and I are going to hyper focus on one, two, three, four accounts that have huge upside in your sales territory. And by the end of the year, the, the money we're both going to make on these accounts is going to be two, three, four times what might have given up on the minnows. So in theory, you can do kind of a, a buyout refocus kind of uh, thing. But when we look at each individual salesperson and the profile of their territory, we'll find out that there are some customers who basically are small customer kind of reps. They have succeeded in the past by calling a lot of little guys that no one else calls on and because they show up, the lonely customer gives them a bone and, and that's fine. But at the same time, these, these, these reps may not be doing a very good job with the potential, the, with the very large whales that they have in their, in their territory. So if we, you know, said we got 10 salespeople and two of them are, are calling on nothing but small customers, let's find them a new job, maybe with our company or maybe with some other company and take 80, 90% of their accounts that don't, uh, won't support economically the outside sales coverage service model, boom, they go into the small, the, 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 the small customer division, if you will. But what are we going to do with the whales they're sitting on? I say, well, let's take those whales and let's go to our very best aces, customers, and say, or, or, or cus uh, reps, and say, hey, you know, you got a lot of minnows. We want to take these away, but at the same time, we're going to give you these new whales. And the sales margin dollars that they've done historically are dwarf. They're already a lot bigger than what you're going to give up in the minnows, and the upside's huge too. So it's a it's a great trade for a for a superstar sales rep. Um, and that might be a good time to say, and you know what, we're going to switch, we're going to change the compensation program. We're going to put you on a guaranteed salary, whatever you made last year, we guarantee you're going to make that forever going forward kind of thing. So you have no downside risk. But on the upside, your new incentive is going to be based on net profit growth. I call that delta, meaning difference, and PBIT, profit before interest and tax. Now. Another little sub niche of, 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 of reps you may have if you have if you're in a business where there's a lot of brokerage direct ship uh, business for manufacturers to end users. So really, the value added the distributors providing is the sales guy calling on the account and trade credit. You're sort of a trade credit shield for the manufacturers. And these uh, big hitter guys, with all this big volume working on thin margins, have such control of their accounts that they could leave and take their business with them. Then leave them alone. Don't don't. Do they they're not even here about all these programs because frankly they they don't have any small accounts to speak of. Or you could do a little buyout program on the on their small accounts. Um, let me get some rid of some of this uh, stuff here. Now. When we switch to a salary, uh, we'll notice that right away the, the guaranteed salary we're paying for the larger margin dollars in the historic 
territory because we've consolidated whales with one ace account, the actual ratio drops. So our, 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 our compensation as a percent of margin dollars drops right away. Uh, and going forward, if the incentive is on improving operating profit, then what's happen that 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 percent we can actually tune by customer because going forward we don't want to have a sales force centric uh, th way of thinking about our business that worked when we were at the beginning of a life cycle when it's very mature and consolidating and, and the customers have all the power we want to be customer centric about everything so if a big customer requires a lot more service and people on the account than just the sales rep there might be a smaller percent if the salesperson can handle the whole thing, there could be a bigger percent. The point is, is that it's flexible. Um, also, we're now paying a, a difference between maintenance, that's the salary. In other words, because you take care of a certain amount of historic margin dollar or net profit, now that we think about it that way, we're going to pay you a salary. But we'll pay you more richly on upside incentives for the year. But at the end of the year, you have a new, whatever your, your net profit was, that's the new base. And if you want a new incentive, you got to grow that beyond. So it's a bit of a ratchet effect. Uh, now, of course, you can give people raises in their salary because they are responsible for taking care of bigger net profit kind of territories. But really a key thing here is now everyone in the company is going to be aligned around trying to grow operating profit. I don't care if it's Wally in the warehouse or George in the truck or, or Sally out selling. Everybody's trying to figure out how to grow profit before interest and tax because they're going to be tied into some sort of gain sharing bonus or incentive based on that. Now, one last thing to consider is if we go out and we team sell whales with aces, who follows up better, aces or little rocket roadster order taking uh, sales reps? And obviously aces do. So if we're going to make big headway with big accounts, we want our best people uh, on them. So we're going to get a lot more upside growth uh, with this kind of thinking. So that's my answer to the sales force won't like it. We will break that big question into lots of little sub problems and deal with each one separately. Thank you.